today we are going to see about the topic programmable logic array so it is a combination of logic device used to implement the boolean function in digital circuits okay so here we are using programmable and array and programmable or array okay here the main aim of this programmable logic array is to reduce the circuit complexity and to reduce the cost okay so these are all the procedures first so based on the uh, truth table we have to implement the truth table so we are provided with some min terms or max terms okay then we have to write the boolean expression of the min terms in sop form sop is represents the sum of product then we have to obtain the minimum sop function with the help of k map so we are getting the product terms so to getting the product terms we are using the and matrix and then in the next step actually it is a sop so we have to sum these things so for that we are using or matrix okay so for the input functions we are using the buffer element okay so that the a a bar that has been used along with the connections of invert and non invert matrix then after define all these things we design a programming table like this okay so from the programming table then we can design the circuit that we need okay so this is a simple example okay so we are provided with the three boolean functions f1 f2 and f3 okay so we are provided with the three boolean functions f1 f2 and f3 so for f1 first we are using k map okay so a b c it represents the three variable k map okay so it is 2 to the power of 3 so total a cells should be that okay so this is the form of k map so this is a and this is b c okay so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is the three variable k map and we have to place the ones 0 for 0 1 2 4 we have to place the ones and we have to group it okay so grouping we know that in 2 to the power of terms we have to group it okay so here this is one group and this is one group and this one and this one that represents the group in a k bar so after simplifying we are getting f1 equal to a bar b bar plus a bar c bar plus b bar c bar okay similarly for f2 this f2 and this f3 we implement the same k map and we are getting the corresponding outputs so this is the f2 after using k map we are getting this output and this is f3 after implementation we are getting this okay so now we have to count how many product terms we are having for these three boolean function so here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 so totally we are having nine product terms for all these boolean function so f1 needs three terms f2 need three terms and f3 need three terms okay so this is after simplification using k map okay so our aim is to reduce the product terms under the some terms then only we can get a simplified version of the design okay so we have to reduce this nil to a minimal number okay so that is the main aim of this plt okay so now what we have to do is we have to compare the terms the f1 with the other two terms f2 with other two terms f3 with the other two terms okay so whenever there is a common variable is there means we have to remove that okay if it occurs more than one time means we have to write only ones okay so now compare the f1 with the f2 and the f3 so now compare f1 with the f2 first there will be no common terms among f1 and the f2 okay then compare f1 and the f3 okay now also there is no common terms so f1 don't have any common terms with the f2 and the f3 okay now comparing f2 and the f3 okay So F2 and F3, while we are comparing, we are getting common terms here. This AC, okay. So these are the common terms. But F1, there is no common terms. So what we have to do is, we have to take a complement for this function F1. Okay. So now generally, what is F1? It is summation M of 0, 1, 2, 4. Okay. So when we are going to write F1 bar, we have to write the remaining terms: 3, 5, 6, 7. because it is a three variable k map okay so three variable means what are the terms will come from 0 to 7 so remaining terms apart from the 0 to 7 we have to write here for the f1 bar okay now we have to implement the k map and simplify this summation m of 3567 then we are getting the 
output as F1 bar equal to AB plus AC plus BC. Okay. Now we have to compare this F1 bar with F2 and F3. Okay. Now why we are comparing this F1 bar with F2? We are having the common terms. This AB and the AC. Okay. Because here one AB we are having, and here also we are having one AB. Then AC. Here also we are having AC, and here also we are having AC. Okay. Then F1 bar and F3. Okay. This F1 bar and F3. So what are the terms that are common? This AC. Again, this AC with the, this term. This AC. Okay. Then BC. Okay. Here one BC is there, and here one BC. Okay. So when comparing this F1 bar with F3, we are having AC and the BC as the common terms. Now come to F2 and the F3. We already calculated that AC and A bar, B bar, C bar are the common terms among F2 and F3. Okay. Now among these six terms, we have to write only once. If there are repeated terms, means we have to write only once. On that case, we are having AB. Okay. Then AC. Okay. Then B C. Okay. Then A bar, B bar, C bar. Okay. So initially we reduced from nine to six here, and six to four here. So finally we are having only four product terms. Okay. We have to reduce nine to six, and then six to four. Okay. So in this step we have to stop. Then we have to draw the programming table. So this table that we call it as programming table. Okay, this table is programming table. So here we have to write serial number, product terms, inputs, and outputs. So totally, how many product terms are there? A, B, A, C, B, C, A bar, B bar, C bar. Okay. Then write the inputs. Okay. So uh, here, in the case of inputs, if the term is coming, means we have to write the one, or otherwise put a dash. So here there is no C term. So put a dash here. Here no B term. So put a dash here. So here no A term. Okay. Whenever there is a inverting term is coming means we should mention as zero zero and zero. Okay, this is how we represent the input. Then come to the output. Here why we represent the C? C means complement. So F1 here we took complement. So we mention that F1 here as C. Okay, C means complement. And what are the terms that are coming for F1? A, B, A, C, and B, C. So we are putting one 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 here. Okay, and for F2 what are the terms coming? A B B C and the A bar B bar C bar. Then for F3, what are the terms that are coming? For F3, here they have mentioned A C B C and the A bar B bar C bar. Okay. Initially that A B here no term is coming. Okay. So whenever the term is coming, means we have to mention as one or otherwise put a dash. Okay. Final part. Okay. So this is that design that we needed. Design using this PLA for this Boolean function. So here. Uh, it is represented as the input buffer elements. That A, B, C. These are the input buffer elements. So this is A. This line represents A, and uh, the inverting term that represents the A bar. And this is B. This is B bar, C, and C bar. First, in a row base, first we have to draw a line. Okay. Then we have to make the programmable under it. Totally, we are having four product terms. So I have drawn four under gates here. Functions here f1, f2, and the f3. Okay, so I have drawn f1, f2, and the f3. For that, I have drawn r gates. Okay, now uh, consider this. These are all programmable and array, and these are all programmable r array. Okay, so by using these connections, we are going to design this PLA. Okay, so here first we can uh, for the variables we are putting the cross mark here. Here it is a b. Okay. So here the next product term is A C. So A and C. We have to mark it. And here it is B and C. B C. And here it is A bar, B bar and C bar. A bar, B bar, C bar. Okay. Now we have to add this for F1. What are the terms that are coming? For F1 here, F1 bar, we are having A B A C B C. So for the terms, we are marking it. And for F2. What are the terms that we are having? A B A C A bar B bar C bar that we are marking. Then for F3 also we are marking that A C B C and A bar C bar. Okay. 
so we connected them with the R gate. Okay, so we connected them with the R gate. So this function that governs the F1 bar, F2, and the F3. As we are using the logic function one to identify the direct terms, and logic function zero for the complement terms. So this is how we design the circuit for PLT.